So you may have watched Mighty Morphin Power Rangers once and always on Netflix and thought to yourself, I haven't been into Power Rangers in a long time, but this special really got me going again. Or, somehow, this is the first time you've seen something Power Rangers and want to see more of the franchise. And you're probably looking to fans that have been in the space for a long time for some advice on where to pick up Power Rangers. To either watch it or read it. To see the shows and movies, or the comics, or both. Well, today's video is going to help you with that. All of my accumulated Power Rangers knowledge is here to guide you into how to enjoy Power Rangers. It's Morphin' Time! Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome to my Power Rangers viewing guide. This is designed for fans that have been a part of the franchise for a long time, fans that are just getting into it, and most specifically, fans who just watched that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers special on Netflix and are looking for the next Power Rangers thing to enjoy. And that is the idea behind this video. So if it comes off kind of like repeating stuff you already know, maybe you're already deep enough that you don't necessarily need the guide, but I hope you'll stick around and watch it anyways. I have designed the guide to essentially not be go watch this season because it's good, and more to give you an idea of what you want to watch. I think with any franchise, we all have our own entry points into things, and sometimes it's just watching a random episode. And that sometimes can be the best way to get into a franchise, not necessarily starting from the beginning of its production history, but just watching an episode. And sometimes, maybe what you want to do is just watch the first episode of a season and see if you're going to enjoy it. So, today's video is all about that. Now, before we get too far deep into this, if you like this type of video, hit the like button, hit subscribe and notification bell for all the Power Rangers and other types of videos on the channel, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions about what I bring up here. If you want any deeper detail on things, let me know in the comments. Also, let's just talk about how I got into Power Rangers. I think that's a good starting point. Because for me, I grew up in Iceland. Not necessarily in the US, I was on a military base because my dad was military, and I grew up there. And so I was born there, and that means that Power Rangers wasn't necessarily traditionally broadcasted. So the way I got into Power Rangers was through VHS tapes. Specifically, the first VHS tape I saw was the Power Rangers in Space one, compiling the Psycho Ranger saga into one tape, even though it left off Carlos on call, probably a best move in the end. But essentially, it combined an arc of the show and got me really excited about what Power Rangers was. And that was kind of like my earliest Power Rangers memory. From there, I saw the Mighty Morphin and Turbo movies, which were also on VHS, and we'll talk about those later. But essentially, that was kind of my foray into Power Rangers. When we eventually moved from Iceland to the States, I started watching a season called Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, which, if you could tell by the morpher I'm wearing, is my all-time favorite season of Power Rangers. But essentially the point is that not necessarily you have to start with the first episode of Mighty Morphin and watch your way through 30 years of TV. You can do that. However, it's kind of fun just to jump in at any point that interests you. So on that, we're going to kind of frame the guide around that. Absolutely, option one is to just go from the beginning. If you watch the special and we're like, I want to know everything, if you're one of those people that loves binge-watching shows, Power Rangers got like 900-something episodes for you, so just go for it, you know? Just start with Mighty Morphin, work your way through Alien, into Zeo, etc. Just work in production order and release order, and you'll have a great time. Absolutely great time. I have done that, actually, uh, I did an entire run one time, from Mighty Morphin all the way up to whatever the current season was. So that is something you can do. However, let's look at what are your options if you just want to jump into one season. Not necessarily all of them, but just one. So when you're talking about wanting to watch any season of Power Rangers, I'm sure you can jump in anywhere. Honestly, you could. You could literally just go, that one looks cool, and watch it. However, I think some continuity notes would be helpful if you are looking to jump into a season that is completely standalone, because there are several. Power Rangers does have an ongoing living continuity, so yeah, things are going to come up. Even some of the seasons I call standalone still will have crossover episodes, and so that does make them a little bit less approachable, but you're talking about one or two episodes out of a 30 to 40 episode season, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, just enjoy it and have a sneak peek of another season you could watch. So first things first, let's talk about the original continuity group known as the Zordon Era. This was a series of seasons from Mighty Morphin to In Space that was essentially one connected storyline. You had characters carry forward season to season, as opposed to the cast changing every season like we do now. First things first, the first three seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. 
Lasting 145 episodes, this was quite a lengthy, huge chunk of the franchise, and it's the one most people are familiar with. It's where the franchise got its start, it's essentially the most popular, and it's the one that companies have been pushing for the last like 10, 15 years as the only important season, so you probably heard of Mighty War from Power Rangers, especially if you just watched the Netflix special. Now this of course is three seasons, however it does end on a cliffhanger. That cliffhanger leads into the 10 episode Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers miniseries, which I don't recommend watching standalone. While it doesn't feature the characters from the previous season as the Rangers, they're still there in the season, so it really works as like a Mighty Morphin epilogue, less so than its own thing. Now Power Rangers Zeo is picking up from the cliffhanger that Alien Rangers leaves on, so again, you're not really getting a nice clean break with Zeo. Now, Zeo doesn't end on a cliffhanger per se. It seemed like there were more episodes that they were going to produce, but it has sort of a lead-in into Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, which is a canon film to the main TV series. That movie leads straight into Power Rangers Turbo, which is the next season. And Power Rangers Turbo ends on a cliffhanger that leads into Power Rangers In Space. And you'll hear from a lot of fan sites that In Space is the best season. It probably is. It's in my top ranking as well. However, if you're a newcomer, I don't recommend In Space. Not only is it a little bit higher quality than a bunch of other seasons, which will give you a false perception of the franchise, it's also not really good if you don't know the continuity. They pick up from a cliffhanger, and they bring back a lot of characters from those past seasons. And it's essentially supposed to have been the final season when the show was canceled by Fox Kids, before the ratings were so good that they brought the show back and it kept going. Power Rangers is like a cockroach franchise, as no matter how many times people try to kill it, it just gets back up and keeps going. So, In Space was essentially supposed to be the finale. So if you're talking about Zordon era, the best way to watch it is from Mighty Morphin to In Space. Now, I think personally that early Mighty Morphin doesn't hold up very well, but it was a different time. But if you're in it for the long haul, it's a good run of shows. There is the alternate path of starting with the Turbo Power Rangers movie, since that is a clean break. There, It's not following up from a cliffhanger of a previous season. And Turbo does a cast switch halfway through that leads into In Space. So it's not the worst option, honestly. However, let's talk about the other seasons. Lost Galaxy is not counted as part of the Zordon era, and that's because it's sort of an epilogue. You have an entirely new Ranger cast. However, characters like Alpha, the Astro Mega ship from In Space, carry forward. And then you have a crossover later on that leads to reintroducing a character from In Space into Lost Galaxy. So Lost Galaxy is kind of like the Star Wars sequel trilogy or Star Trek Picard, where you could watch it on its own, but you are going to get continuity from previous things, and it kind of works better when you've seen that previous stuff. However, if you want to get kind of like an idea of things that happened prior to it, totally an option as a jumping on point. Now let's talk about seasons that are standalone. Starting with Lightspeed Rescue. This is about five people who do rescue ops, and it's honestly pretty cool to see the Power Rangers be people with jobs as opposed to teenagers picked out of a high school randomly. It's a different vibe for the franchise, and I do appreciate that. Kind of builds on Lost Galaxy, where the Rangers were a little bit older as well. So with Lightspeed Rescue, there is a crossover with Lost Galaxy, but since the Lost Galaxy Rangers are lightly featured in it, not heavily, you don't really have to worry about continuity. It's a good starting place if the theme interests you. Following up from that, we have Time Force. Time Force does work standalone. There is one crossover episode with Lightspeed Rescue, but once again, it's just one episode. Time Force is also well regarded as one of the best seasons of the franchise, as it was the first one to be a union production, and they got a little bit higher caliber of actors. There's some really good stuff in Time Force, though it's not my favorite. I do really enjoy it. Then you have Wild Force. Wild Force is probably the most continuity heavy of this era because Wild Force actually has three crossover episodes, a two-parter with Time Force, and the Forever Red 10th Anniversary episode, which honestly, if you're looking to get into Power Rangers and trying to figure out what characters you'll like, watch Forever Red. You get a sampling of all the Red Rangers prior, minus poor Rocky, uh, and you actually kind of get a cool overview of the franchise, which is really neat. It's one of my favorite episodes, and I highly recommend it. Now from here, Saban Productions, who worked on Mighty Morphin through Wild Force, had sold the company over to uh, Disney, and Disney bought Fox Kids, its library, and Power Rangers Productions. So Disney started Power Rangers Ninja Storm as being a standalone, new separate season, and it was only made because of toy contracts. Once again, Cockroach franchise. But essentially, Ninja Storm was made because they had to fulfill a toy contract to Bandai, and then Disney was like, wow, this model of adapting a Japanese show into you know, an American show by just replacing the actor footage and changing up some stuff here and there, that's pretty profitable. If we move it to New Zealand, it's pretty cheap too. 
So Ninja Storm is completely standalone. There are no crossover episodes within it, and it actually kind of pretends like the other seasons didn't happen. This would be retconned later, however Ninja Storm is a good entry point, and in fact was one of my favorite seasons growing up, and still is. It is definitely more comedic than other seasons, and ramps up the camp factor to about 100, whereas most seasons are at about 90. So yeah, it's Power Rangers. It's going to be campy, it's going to be cheesy, but it's going to be really fun. Ninja Storm is a fun one. The next season, Dino Thunder, is definitely more of a fan favorite, and sort of is more the continuity tie-in. They brought back Tommy, who was, of course, in Mighty Morphin, and Zeo, and Turbo, and showed up for Forever Red, and he's here back as a main ranger on the team, and so there is some continuity. However, if you're looking to get into the franchise, Dino Thunder can be a great start because Episode 4, Legacy of Power, was the 500th episode of Power Rangers, and includes a basic recap of the entire franchise to that point. Plus, Dino Thunder is really great. Honestly, if you want to just kind of jump in at Ninja Storm and go into Dino Thunder and remember that they were made in the early 2000s, it's not a bad place to start, really. The next season, SPD, also features crossovers with Dino Thunder, but works standalone, being set in the future. The far-off future of 2025. Okay, that's not as far off as it used to be, but SPD is also well regarded for its character work and development. In fact, I have a friend whose only season he's ever watched is SPD because that was the one he remembered watching as a kid, watched it again later and was like, wow, I still really like this. So SPD is great. After that, you have Power Rangers Mystic Force, another season without a crossover, which also means it's really standalone. However, the new magic theme did throw off a lot of Ranger fans when it debuted. In fact, though, it has some really great character work, some really excellent music choices, and some really cool effects and stunts. So if you're looking for a more magic theme, if you're into fantasy, Mystic Force is going to be your jam. Power Rangers Operation Overdrive is a, another season that took the idea of what if the Rangers had jobs before being Rangers, and yeah, different jobs. Not like Mystic Force where they all worked at a record shop, but different jobs in Overdrive. And in Overdrive, they, uh, hmm, what's the phrase? They come off a little self-centered. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird dynamic, but it is different. It was also the 15th anniversary season and featured the Once a Ranger crossover, which brought in five previous Rangers from previous seasons. Once again, if you're hung up on continuity, that may be a problem, but you could just go in and enjoy it. Then we have Jungle Fury. Do you like martial arts? Do you like Hong Kong martial arts specifically? Jungle Fury is your jam. And also, Jungle Fury has no crossover episodes, so it makes it a great, great starting point. Then there's Power Rangers RPM, another season without crossovers, due to being set in an alternate universe and a dystopian future where a computer virus has destroyed all of humanity. RPM is really good, and if you're trying to get into Power Rangers, but you enjoy the camp, but you kind of want a little bit of edge to it, RPM has a little bit of edge. People are like, oh, it's the dark you know, season because everybody dies, but they also make jokes about the fact their Zords have like anime eyes on them. So it's a fun kind of dark. It is a darker tone, but it is really interesting, and it's definitely one worth checking out. Now, once again, that was the end of the franchise. Again, Cockroach franchise, never actually dies. The next season was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2010, also known as the Reversion Mighty Morphin. Skip that one, don't even bother. It's essentially taking a selection of Mighty Morphin episodes and adding new comic effects to spruce it up. Not really worth your time. Now, Samurai was kind of a semi-reboot to the franchise. Now, admittedly, I think that Samurai in the next few seasons kind of take a little bit younger kid approach, whereas like Power Rangers was kind of like a 7-10 to 10 year old thing. This goes to kind of a four to six year old thing. But that's not to say that Samurai doesn't have good storytelling, because most of it was lifted from its Japanese Sentai counterpart, but two seasons of Samurai honestly pulled together pretty good. Though if you are looking for this season, uh, only season one has been uploaded to the Power Rangers YouTube and season two is no longer on Netflix, so best of luck. Megaforce, the 20th anniversary project, released as Megaforce and Super Megaforce, two seasons, which was supposed to be anniversary based. They sort of didn't do the best at it, but they did bring back a lot of past actors. However, due to them not coming back in any significant role, you could watch this as, again, a primer to the rest of the franchise, to give you glimpses of characters. Now, these seasons aren't currently available on YouTube or Netflix, at least in the US, so good luck. They're out there. Also, there is an extended cut of its final episode, Legendary Battle, which I highly recommend over the initial two-parter that was in the main series. Next, we have Dino Charge, Dino Supercharge. These are two of the best seasons that have been produced in the modern day. I think they're the best seasons since RPM, and honestly, you can't go wrong with these. They're set in their own separate universe, so that means there's no crossovers within the show itself. So go for it. Enjoy Dino Charge. 
It kind of, I think, is the most modern season that I find to be really approachable for new fans. After that, we had Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel. They're still available on Netflix uh, worldwide, I think. Not the best starting place, especially because they bring back characters from Dino Charge, and even though they don't have a traditional crossover in the first season, the second season brings back a bunch of actors, and if you don't know who any of them are, it's not gonna make much of an impact. Next up was Beast Morphers. This is where Saban sold the franchise to Hasbro, and Saban mostly produced Beast Morphers. Beast Morphers is kind of nuts. I can't really recommend it to a new fan because the second season is filled with so much continuity connection to past seasons, I don't think it's that friendly to newcomers. I honestly think they don't explain a lot of stuff, especially with the third act twist in the second season. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It really works if you've seen other seasons or at least have an idea of what Power Rangers is. And the same goes for the most recent seasons, Dino Fury. Also two seasons, also available on Netflix. Here's the thing about Dino Fury. I think it's got a lot of good things going for it, but I found the best things about it are its past continuity connections, which can be overwhelming if you are a newcomer because it overwhelmed me as someone that absorbed all of this before. Because yeah, they start just lore dumping. They're like, hey, you remember this? Remember this? Remember this? And it's like, slow down. You're going to scare off new viewers. So if you're looking for a modern era, you know, the most recent like entry point, I guess, would be Dino Charge. And everything after that, you're going to kind of need some of the knowledge of continuity. Dino Fury doesn't feature any crossovers. Beast Morphers did feature crossovers. But Dino Fury's crossovers are more lore-based. So that's where we're at with Power Rangers. The upcoming Cosmic Fury is a sequel to Dino Fury, so just lump it all in with what I just said about Dino Fury. And that is the basis of the main seasons. However, we have some side material. First of all, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, totally standalone. Go watch it and enjoy it. It's a big action Hollywood version of Power Rangers, which is out of continuity and it Honestly, it's mostly action scenes and there's not much else going on, but I enjoy it. Uh, it's got some really dated CGI work, though. Like, really, really dated. There also is the 2017 Power Rangers movie, in case you don't enjoy fun or camp. This dark tale will keep you awake, because uh, it's mostly a character piece. Uh, not much action, definitely a lot of character stuff. Really dark tone, not really that fun, to be honest. It's there if you like the tone and the grit of that. And then lastly, if you like things like Critical Role or Dungeons and Dragons in general, tabletop RPGs, Power Rangers Hyperforce exists, which is a live tabletop RPG show. I enjoyed it because I like that kind of stuff, but it's not gonna be for everybody. But what you get is some really great character work, writing and storytelling on a level that the show's never achieved because every episode's like three hours long. And it's all archived on the Hyper RPG YouTube channel for you to watch. Now, just in case movies, TV shows, and comics aren't your thing, Power Rangers has some other things. You love fighting games? Power Rangers Battle for the Grid exists. It's really good. It's made by people that love Marvel vs. Capcom, so you know what kind of style to get into. Do you love mobile games? Power Rangers Legacy Wars. It's still going like five years later. It's really impressive. If you like tabletop RPGs, there's the Power Rangers role-playing game, which is a more traditional pen and paper game that has crossover compatibility with Transformers and G.I. Joe. If you like card games, the Power Rangers deck building game is pretty good at scratching that itch because there's no active like trading card game, but this one I've heard is pretty great. If you like miniature-based action games, Power Rangers Heroes for the Grid is definitely something you might be interested in because there is a lot of cool stuff in there from the monsters to the characters to all the awesome artwork and all the lore involved. Those are all kind of different options if you like gaming side for your Power Rangers enjoyment. And of course there's like, you know, 30 years worth of toys, but I'm not gonna even highlight anything because we'd be here for the next like century. So maybe you're like, I've seen all that and I wanna read the comics, but oh my God, there's like a hundred something comics. How do I get into the comics? Well, let me tell you, cause I know comics. Now, when we're talking about comic books, we're talking about the ones made by Boom Studios starting in 2016. I have loved these. In times when I've been down on Power Rangers, I've always been up on the comics. I love the Boom comics a lot. So, I'm going to break down how to read the Boom comics. It's always kind of a weird thing. Just like with the show, you can always start from issue zero of Mighty Morphin and go in release order. You can also just pick an arc and just go for it. Uh, you could also just pick up the most recent issue and just start reading. The thing is, is that if you love knowing every single detail, start at the top, just work your way through. If you love just jumping into something and trying to experience it, just go pick up uh, issue 107 when it comes out. The thing is, is that you don't necessarily have to have read everything, but if you wanna read everything in approximate continuity order, excluding short stories, because I have a list for that, but that we would be here for another hour. So let's look at the correct 
chronological reading order for the Boom Studios comics, according to me, someone who's read all of them twice. So let's begin. So first things first, you may think, oh, it's easy to do chronological order. It starts with Mighty Morphin number zero. Uh-uh-uh, we're starting with Go-Go Power Rangers. Go-Go Power Rangers was a second ongoing introduced due to the success of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and Go-Go actually takes place prior to that. Because there is no Green Ranger Tommy yet, it is just the core five Mighty Morphin Rangers. This essentially goes over the origin of the team, especially in the first arc, Arrival Day, covering issues 1 through 8, the first two trade volumes, and is collected in the first deluxe hardcover. Now the next arc in Go Go is something that puts people off from reading it first. It's the Shattered Grid arc. Uh, this is issues 9 through 12. They are collected in Deluxe 1, Volume 3 of the trades, and also the Shattered Grid hardcover. However, I think you can totally read these prior to the Shattered Grid event because they don't really tie in. They still take place in that earlier time period. So it gives you some hints of the future, but that's about it. Now the next arc is the Power Swap arc, which you may know of because of the Lightning Collection figures that spawned from it. This ran from issues 13 through 16, was covered in volume four of the trade paperbacks, and was the last part of the deluxe hardcover volume one. Next up is what I would place the Back to School special. It's mostly an inconsequential one-shot, it is included in Deluxe Hardcover 1, and it is included in Volume 6 of the Trade Paperbacks, which is after Issue 20. The last arc before Go Go Power Rangers jumps forward post Green Ranger is Issue 17 through 20, which I call Hidden Pass. This is included in Volume 5, as well as the Deluxe Hardcover 2, which is forthcoming in June. And then lastly, to tie up this era of Go Go Power Rangers is the Forever Rangers one-shot, which follows the events of Issue 20 and is in Deluxe Hardcover 2, as well as Volume 6 of the Trade Paperbacks. Now that brings us to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers proper. The first year was all about the Green Ranger. Now, the actual events of the Green Ranger getting his powers, being brainwashed by Rita, and being turned back to the Ranger team was told in the Green with Evil episodes of Mighty Morphin. The comics choose to tell you to just go watch those episodes. While the comics have a modern setting and are meant to be standalone continuity-wise, they sometimes will just reference an episode like those events happened in this time period. Don't worry about it. We're not telling that story, which is fine, but I would love a miniseries showing Green with Evil in the Boom universe, you know, just to see if there's any changes. So the first arc was known as Green Ranger Year One, covering issues zero through 10, and that was in volumes one through three of the paperbacks and Deluxe Hardcover Year One. Now, if you're somebody that's tired of seeing the same old Mighty Morphin stuff recycled, you're like, I've seen these characters, I want something new. May I present Lord Draken, the first comic exclusive ranger that really made a splash. He appeared in issue 11 of Mighty Morphin, and his arc runs from issues 11 through 16, covered in volumes three and four of the trade paperbacks, as well as Year One, and part of year two of the deluxe hardcovers. So this next arc, which took place after the Draken arc, has a lot of revelations about what happened in the past of the Boom Comics timeline. So issue 17 through 24, I call Hidden Secrets. And that is covered in deluxe hardcover year two, as well as trade volumes five and six. And then lastly, to round out the initial era of the Mighty Morphin comic, there is the 2016 and 2017 annual issues featuring a collection of short stories each. This was collected in the Lost Chronicles Volume 1 trade paperback and are included in the Year 2 Deluxe Edition. These take place all over the timeline, so I could rank how they work in the timeline, but I can also just tell you, read them here. It's the best point. Now we've come to the first event of the Power Rangers comics, Shattered Grid. You probably have heard about it if you're in the Ranger sphere at all, because it was a big deal. It's like Crisis on Infinite Power Coins. It was a massive crossover for the 25th anniversary of every Ranger ever, essentially, and it's pretty great. I really love it. It's kind of what the previous comics were building towards. Now, the best way to read it is to pick up the deluxe hardcover. It's still available. Unlike the year one and year two that seem to go out of print a lot, you can still get the Shattered Grid hardcover, and I recommend this as the reading order, because it intersplaces everything in the correct reading order, and you don't have to worry about it. However, that's not the most affordable option, so let's go through it. The official order is Mighty Morphin Issues 24 through 25, which was in Volume 7. The Shattered Grid short film that starred uh, Jason David Frank as Draken. Issue 26, followed by the free comic book day special. And then the 2018 annual collection of short stories, but all things that tie into Shattered Grid. Then issues 27 through 30 of Mighty Morphin, and then the Shattered Grid finale one-shot. Now, you may be wondering what's up with the Shattered Grid paperback, and I don't recommend that one. It's not complete. The Shattered Grid paperback is missing the 2018 annual. The individual volumes is missing the 2018 annual and the free comic book day special. The trade paperback of Shattered Grid has the free comic book day special, but no annual. So yeah, just uh, just get this. Highly recommend just getting this if you want to read Shattered Grid nice and concise, because um, yeah, 
it's got everything in it. Now, cracking open the Ranger multiverse allowed the Mighty Morphin title to go beyond Mighty Morphin. And in fact, I thought this was one of the coolest things ever. And then I read the comic. I don't recommend this as a starting point, and that is Beyond the Grid, collected here in one hardcover. Um, this was taking the idea of having multiple Rangers scattered from all over the multiverse and putting them into one team. Brilliant idea. Uh, didn't work out in execution. There is a disconnect because there is a thing that comes with the Boom comics that the Shattered Grid established, which is not they're crossing over all the seasons of the shows. These are future points in the Boom Power Rangers timeline we haven't seen, shattered and fractured to happen all at once, and that's what we have here. So a lot of the characterization doesn't match what we know from the shows, and it's a little bit off-putting. Um, I do think the artwork is beautiful, but this arc of uh, Beyond the Grid ran from issues 31 to 39, is collected in volumes 9 and 10 the paperbacks, but if you're getting it, get the hardcover. It's uh, probably cheaper. Now, next up is the most controversial arc, I think, um, for the most part, is Necessary Evil. This is when they decided, let's go back to the Mighty Morphin team. This is encompassing both GoGo -Go Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It actually has more issues in it than uh, Shattered Grid does. In fact, Shattered Grid fit in one volume. Necessary Evil is two deluxe hardcovers. Now, the odd part about this is the actual continuity order of Necessary Evil isn't presented in these books or officially. What they want you to do there is alternate the GoGo -Go Power Rangers issues with the Mighty Morphin issues. However, it's best to read the GoGo -Go Power Rangers issues First. So for GoGo -Go Power Rangers, issues 21 through 32, other than is known as volumes 7 through 9, and what is included in GoGo -Go Deluxe 2, as well as Necessary Evil 1 and 2 for the Deluxe hardcovers, is going to be the origin of a new team of Rangers called the Omega Rangers, which was a great way of taking the idea of Rocky, Adam, and Aisha becoming the new red, black, and yellow Rangers because Jason, Trini, and Zack don't go to a peace conference. That's their cover story for going to space and becoming a new team of Rangers. Now, the rest of the arc takes place in the Mighty Morphin issues, issues 40 through 50, which collected in volumes 11 through 13, as well, of course, the two deluxe editions for Necessary Evil. This is the other half of the story, which is showing the origin of the White Ranger for the main Mighty Morphin team, as well as the dynamic when the Mighty Morphin Rangers meet the Omega Rangers. So after Necessary Evil, there was the Aftermath arc, which was issues 51 through 55 of Mighty Morphin, and that is collected in volume 14, as well as Necessary Evil Deluxe volume two. This is essentially just kind of wrapping up some plot points because we're gonna be rebranding the comics. However, before we get there, we're going to have a little side journey for Ranger Slayer. Ranger Slayer is introduced during Shattered Grid, and she is a new character, kind of like how Draken's a new character, she is an alternate universe version of Kimberly. She reappeared in Necessary Evil, and in the Necessary Evil Deluxe Edition, you can get her one-shot, Ranger Slayer, which led into the three-issue Draken New Dawn, which doesn't have Draken in it. I'm just going to tell you that it's all about Ranger Slayer and going back to her original world and seeing what followed up there. Now, if you are looking for Draken New Dawn, it is only available in the Draken New Dawn trade paperback, which also includes the Ranger Slayer one-shot, so it's a really nice complete package. Now, for some reason, they decided to split the comics. With now having the Mighty Morphin team and the Omega Rangers on the board, they decided instead of having them share the same comic, it should be split into Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers. So the Mighty Morphin issues are about the Mighty Morphin team, and Power Rangers is about the Omega Rangers. Now, this split made sense because they were diverging storylines, even though there was some overlap. However, they pretty much just abandoned this pretty dang quick, and I think we should have just had Mighty Morphin Power Rangers be a twice-monthly book with alternating focus. So the first 12 issues of Mighty Morphin kind of work standalone, and the first 12 issues of Power Rangers kind of work standalone, minus the first issues which tie in heavily to each other. And yeah, they even were kind of promoting them when you see you have a connecting image, and then there were variant covers that basically made this issue 56 and 57, etc. for Mighty Morphin. So after those initial arcs of issues 1 through 12 of Mighty Morphin, which is also volume 1 through 3, and issue 1 through 12 of Power Rangers, volumes 1 through 3, there were two one-shots following that, including Heir to Darkness, which is an Astronoma backstory issue, and Edge of Darkness, which features the Phantom Ranger. The next arc is probably my least favorite, the Eltarian War, and this one you do need to alternate books back and forth. You can't read one than the other like you could with the previous arc. So alternating issues 13 through 16 of Mighty Morphin and 13 through 16 of Power Rangers, which account for volume four of the respective series. And then the last arc of this weird split era was the Charge to 100, which I call the Death Ranger Saga. This is actually, I think, a really good starting point because 
because you'll get some tie-ins to not only the broader Power Rangers universe with characters from in space being brought in, but you get some really cool concepts like the Death Ranger. Uh, a lot of edge. There is so much edge you can probably cut your finger on it. However, this arc ran from Mighty Morphin issues 17 through 22, also known as volumes 5 through 6. Uh, Power Rangers issue 17 and 22, also known as volumes 5 to 6. The Countdown to Ruin one-shot, which was in Mighty Morphin volume 6. And the Unlimited Death Ranger one-shot, which was included in Power Rangers volume 6. And it all wraps up with issue 100, which is collected in neither of those and is in Recharged Volume 1, which is weird because it's the finale to the whole Death Ranger arc. The problem with these uh, issues of the split books is they don't really work independently too much. Like, essentially, you could get the initial arcs working independently, the first 12, so the first year was good, but then after that, they just started intermixing too much and just kind of became a problem. So the thing is, I would recommend waiting for the deluxe hardcovers if you're wanting to have an easier reading experience, because I imagine they will be you know, issue one, Mighty Morphin, issue one, Power Rangers, yada, yada, yada. But those don't come out till November. So if you want to read this sooner, just get the trades and good luck. Now this has led into our current era, the recharged era, starting with issue 101. The books are merged back together. The Omegas don't get as much of a focus now, and it's mostly focusing on Mighty Morphin, but there is some cool stuff going on. And this era of the current books has been really cool because there's been a lot of great things. There is a new Green Ranger in town who's not Tommy because Tommy graduated to the White Ranger. There's the Omega Rangers, which there are four of them and one of them is a cat. There is just so many cool references to other Power Rangers lore, including stuff from Ninja Steel. I like it. It makes, it, it's like they tried Beyond the Grid, couldn't get a book to sell well with a non-Mighty Morphin team and decided to just expand the Mighty Morphin team's world. They bring in stuff from the Machine Empire from Zeo. They bring in in-space characters. I like this balance we have going on. And the current run by Melissa Flores is written spectacularly because she knows all the comics, like I do, so it kind of feels nice. Now that is not all the Boom comics have to offer. There are some other spin-offs and miniseries. The first miniseries was known as Power Rangers Pink. I call it Kimberly's Pan Global Panic. It takes place after Kimberly has left the Mighty Morphin team to go do the Pan Global Olympics, but has to suit back up and get her powers back and actually form a new Ranger team. I'm not exactly sure if the Boom continuity is going to keep this in its continuity, but I think it's a cool adventure saying, hey, what happened to Kimberly after she left the team? Next up, we have the 25th anniversary special, which is a one shot that doesn't have a main continuity fitting. It features uh, stories, not just from Mighty Morphin, but seasons like Mystic Force or Ninja Steel, but they are sort of meant to be the established boom continuity versions of all these other seasons. It's a really cool special. It is collected not only in Lost Chronicles Volume 2, which is a paperback, it is also included in Beyond the Grid Deluxe Edition, which also makes that really worth it. And then most recently, there was the six-issue Power Rangers Universe miniseries, which shows us the origin of the Morphin Grid. It's cool. There's a lot of lore. While you don't get to establish the characters as well, because it only is a six-issue miniseries, I do think the actual lore implications of all this and the world building is fantastic. There have been several crossovers for the Power Rangers comics, including Justice League Power Rangers, which features Superman telling Kimberly, ma'am, please land the pterodactyl. That's amazing. There also is two crossovers of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which have resulted in Lightning Collection figures. And there has been a crossover with Godzilla, which makes the most sense that I've ever seen in the world. And then to round it all out is these, the one shots, the one shot original graphic novels, an idea I thought was great that kind of got fumbled due to fan reception. First up, Aftershock, the official sequel to the 2017 movie. Everyone that keeps asking for a sequel to that movie, it's right here, it's a comic. It's all you're getting because that movie didn't make enough money. Um, you know, a sequel to that movie would have been great, but if you wanted to see a slight continuation of that world, you got Aftershock. Except it's been so out of print and hard to find that you can almost, like, not even find it anywhere. It's getting reprinted in the upcoming Lost Chronicles Deluxe hardcover, though, so, yeah, there's an option there. Then we get to the kind of weird ones. First of all, Soul of the Dragon. Distinctively, I think, set in the main continuity. Things line up continuity-wise with some things that are referenced even in Hyperforce, and features Tommy kind of doing an old man Logan thing if he's old, retired, and has a Master Morpher that allows him to switch to other forms of his Ranger powers of the past, like he had in Dimensions in Danger, the Super Ninja Steel episode. Then there was the one that made this all fall apart, the Psychopath. Because once again, I think that people got the mixed messaging. See, the thing is, is that that 25th anniversary special was supposed to be the boom continuity, but wasn't really advertised as such. And this was distinctively the main timeline and had no contradictions, including the Master Morpher lining up with what we saw in the show. 
But then the Psychopath, featuring Psycho Green, a comics character, people took this as main continuity. I think this was always supposed to be the boom continuity versions of Andros and Corone, which is why they act different. What, how they act in this lines up with Beyond the Grid and lines up with the Trial of Astronomer one-shot story from 25th Anniversary. That being said, this wasn't a popular comic, but I appreciate how bold it was. It's pretty dang bold. And then in that same vein, Sins of the Future is not the main continuity Wes and Jin, but the versions we saw from Shattered Grid. So yeah, once again, it's kind of weird. I do like that this introduced a new Time Force Ranger because, you know, most of the Rangers we've been getting are exclusive to the comics outside of, well, Psycho Green, who's been in a couple issues of the Mighty Morphin book, have been mostly Mighty Morphin based. But that's your overview of all the Boom comics. I hope that was helpful and not confusing. Remember, you can just kind of jump in anywhere, but maybe a certain arc caught your attention based on how I described it, and that's a good place to start. So there you have it, my Power Rangers watching and reading guide. Remember the thing about Power Rangers, it's about teamwork, it's about helping people, it's about being kind to others, and it is about having fun while fighting monsters to save the planet. Power Rangers is campy, it's cheesy, it's goofy, but it's also full of heart, emotion, and really great world building. And those last three points is what have kept me around. I love Power Rangers, I really do. And sometimes while I don't like some of the more recent seasons due to just probably just getting old, I do love things like the comics. And the important thing to remember with Power Rangers is to have fun. And this goes out to all you longtime fans that complain too much online. And I mean in the sense that you can critique the shows, but stop tagging producers, stop harassing other people because they like or dislike something you like. It's Power Rangers, it's supposed to be fun. And be welcoming to all the new fans that will hopefully come from this new once and always Mighty Morphin special. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, leave me a comment. I would love to know if this was helpful in any way, even if it's just the comic section, because I know that's a huge like list of things and it can be really daunting if you don't know what the order is or the chronological order of it. Also, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, hit subscribe notification bell. There's more Power Rangers in the future. There's a bunch of Power Rangers from the past. And I might do a whole, like, you know, video on the Boom comics and why the deluxe hardcovers are formatted really weird. Um, that might just be a personal pet peeve video, but we'll see. I might do it. Also, be sure to find me every Monday here on this YouTube channel live at 5 p.m. Eastern, talking about all kinds of cool stuff, not just Power Rangers, but others. Also, find me on social media at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at SoundOut12, as long as it is applicable. Also, check out my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at DarkClaw643. Check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for Power Rangers interviews, comic reviews, and more. And until next time, this is Sandout saying goodbye.